We no longer understand what it is to be intelligent. I do not say this to offend, I simply mean to point out that we are living at a very strange moment in history. We are living in a moment where, historically, gathering the information was the most valuable thing. If you knew about the plants, you were the medicine person, you were the farmer or the food person, you were the provider. If you knew about the town gossip and all of the rest, you were the organizer, you were the orchestrator. If you knew what was going on outside of your village, you were a powerful leader. It is no longer the case that gathering information is important or powerful. Now it is gathering relevant information, which means ignoring most information. Beforehand, we were carrying jugs of water back to our village, back to our home, our place of power. Now we are swimming in an ocean and we need to navigate the water, not carry it. So in such a world, Meditation is key. This is not a religious sort of claim. This is not necessarily really a spiritual claim. Um, it has nothing to do with any sort of uh, teenage love of Buddhism and has no nothing to do with any sort of um, Irish allergic reaction to Catholicism. It is simply to say that the psychotechnology, the tool of meditation, is the tool of claiming one's attention. And that is essential that is unavoidable, that is the tool that is required moving into the next phase of humanity, the next phase of civilization, the next whatever, our sense-making ability. Now that we have the internet, now that we are washing information, meditation is mandatory. How do we meditate? I've, re I've done it before, but we'll recap it quickly. Meditation is taking your glasses off, taking whatever thoughts you have and just putting them to the side and returning to the breath, meaning that you treat it like a spotlight. Any shapes that come in, you name them, you label them. That is me thinking, that is me anticipating, that is me planning, that is me remembering, that is me worrying, that is me ruminating, that is me um, irritating myself, perhaps. <laughs> Whatever the ing word to it is, that is the only rule. Put an ing word to it, label it. Doesn't need to be too precise. It just needs to be enough that you categorize it roughly and allow it to pass. So you center on your breath and you allow this ing word, allow it to pass. Second thing, the second thing is that you center your attitude. You do not get frustrated with the fact that you keep having to return to your breath. This is the muscle of attention. You are returning constantly, doing this rep of returning your attention back to your breath. That is what strengthens the muscle. But neither are you meant to fawn over and just be like, oh my God, it's such a beautiful process. And oh, look at how beautiful my thoughts are. I keep going off in this direction. And like, you know, isn't that just so saintly? No. So not to get frustrated, but not to fawn either. You are to firmly, fairly, and in the most friendly manner, bring your attention back to your breath. That is meditation. I believe it is mandatory, as I said. Second, then, or further than that, is wisdom. Further than attention, once we claim our attention, now we need to navigate. We need to wisely navigate the information that we are swimming in. Wisdom is the ability, the ability to take multiple perspectives on a single situation, to understand both sides, to be able to really argue or steel man both sides and to have some sort of nuanced um, opinion or position in that tension between the two, like a guitar string, like a drum skin, any musical instrument that has that tension required. That is wisdom, essentially. How to develop that is not easy because wisdom is frequently not the most powerful. It is the power, most powerful over time. But in the moment, taking a nuanced perspective on something isn't always the most um, invigorating because thinking is required. Nuance is required. People are not necessarily um, easy to receive nuanced information or nuanced arguing. They want a simple, 
short answer or uh, instruction. So elevating wisdom to something that we want to develop into something that we valorize, into something that we um, that we aspire to is the project, is the adventure. So wisdom within the confines of planetary boundaries, within the confines of whatever culture, town or community you are living in or lack thereof community, but whatever the petri dish you are growing in, how to develop wisdom within that. There are multiple different practices to this. You can have your ecology of practices, a sitting practice, a moving practice, an individual practice, a collective practice. Again, you're having tension points between two different poles so that you are stretching your thinking in this multi-perspectival way. I obviously think that the Dialogos practice is the best practice. I think it is the a meta practice. It is a practice that is invigorated, is very much helped by every other practice. Having a moving practice is essential for it. Having a sitting practice, essential, an individual practice, essential, a creative practice or a traditional practice, all, all very important to flesh out what you're bringing to the practice of the Dialogos. But I do believe that Dialogos is the dojo, is the gym to work out wisdom. So obviously, as always, invitation there, please message me. I'd only love to have you at one of these practices where we talk about a virtue. So this can be love, this can be hope, this can be um, tenaciousness, wisdom itself, um, what it is to be um, beautiful or orderly or accepting or authentic, these different virtues. Um, The reason we choose virtues is because virtues are things that we can identify but cannot concretely describe. And yet it is all things that we aspire towards. We all aspire to be accepting and authentic or authentic and humble, even though they're two different things. With all of that said, how do you understand intelligence? What do you think the path towards power is going to be in this new age of AI um, as if the internet wasn't already disruptive enough. What will happen when the machine does language more than us? Does it better than us, perhaps? What happens when we are learning how to communicate like humans from robots? What happens in a world where we are no longer trying to carry the water of information, but we are trying to swim in the ocean of information? That is this week's question. That is where I want to leave you on it. I hope you have had a good week. I hope you're looking forward to the week to come. And I will see you in the next week's video. Bye, guys.